Hello friends, how are you? You happy? So, welcome to Vijay Guys Teaching Cafe. This is a short video lecture about the theme, an interesting theme, structural functional analysis. Previous lecture on YouTube, we have come across David Easton's theory of input output analysis. This is an another perspective about a system theory in political science being contributed by Gabriel Almond. So Gabriel Almond was born nineteen eleven. Was a Russian Jew, migrated to the United States, and he attended the University of Chicago, both as an undergraduate and a graduate student. he taught at the university of uh, city university new york later he worked in the us army during world war second and he later went to yale university as a an academic and he later worked at the stanford university he was a fellow of the american academy of arts and sciences he was also the president of the prestigious american political science association he died in the year 1990 uh, sorry 2002 at the age of 1991 uh, so he was a very prolific academic uh, an influential uh, figure uh, he contributed enormously to the development of uh, political science as an academic discipline he had developed so many uh, keywords uh, i mean so many important vocabularies in political science by by which political science during his lifetime uh, has uh, grown up into a mature discipline uh, with high credibility uh, in the society so his important contribution was in the area of comparative politics and the comparative study of uh, governments and he also developed one of the important concept uh, concepts in political science it is called political culture this is a small brief you know profile of gabriel almond so friends by the time you know uh, gabriel almond became an academic a teacher of political science in unis in the prestigious unis universities like city university new york yale and stanford you know david easton was a doyen of political science he david easton Uh, one of the important proponents of behavioralism and system theory in political science was phenomenal figure uh, after harold laswell and uh, charles e merriam in the us part of the world and uh, david eason himself established his own imprint in the uh, political science fraternity so it was the time you know david eason uh, david eason became a star in political science gabriel almond has come into the picture so david eason has already has given a shape to what is political science what is its content its subject matter as you already know the main uh, problem um, which uh, behavioralist Uh, you know argued that it was founding political science was its subject matter because the political science unlike other uh, disciplines uh, didn't uh, occupy or didn't pose a, a, a serious theory about its content or its subject matter what is its kind of whether it is study of state whether it is study of citizen whether it is study of human nature so it wasn't you know uh, there was no consensus about the exact nature of politics uh, what is its subject matter what is its content what uh, whether whether it studies uh, some specific things in the society so it was you know david easton uh, who proposed the idea that politics is an authoritative allocation of values so uh, he and he proposed a system theory of politics and he proposed a model of analysis called black box model or input output model by which you can study political science how input uh, functions are put into the system and how the system respond to that and takes output and how feedback is developing and again how the feedback is becoming input and uh, how outcomes come so a cyclical process and he proposed this uh, beautiful analysis in political science so it was you know uh, now the turn of gabriel almond and gabriel almond has come out with some interesting uh extensions to the theory already being proposed by uh, you know david easton 
so a number of political scientists have contributed uh, to the theory of uh, general system theory uh, so certainly it was gabriel almond uh, who had a important contribution to the uh, to the study of uh, political science as a system so he proposed the famous structural functional uh, model in political science and structural functional model of analysis in fact the first developed in natural sciences like you know botany zoology and other uh, sciences and later it was adopted by anthropologists like radcliffe brown and uh, malinowski then later adopted by famous american sociologist talcott parson then merton and levy uh, these people developed system theory and uh, in political science the system theory was initially developed by david easton in his input output model or black box model of political analysis so here comes the turn of uh, uh, gabriel almond uh, gabriel almond uh, structural functional approach integrates system approach and institutional approach he tried to integrate system approach with institutional approach uh, his uh, focus shifted from institutions to the functions of institutions so uh, gabriel almond's model uh, popularly known as you know structural functionalism to the students of political science so he stressed the fact that uh, wherever you go we be it europe or uh, be it the third world or the western world or the american world you know you can see that there are political structures everywhere there are political structures there will be some kind of political structures executive legislative judiciary and something like that and all these structures will have certain functions and these functions are similar in in, uh, in any part of, in any part of the world be it europe or um, asia or africa uh, no matter where you know no matter what uh, the structures will have certain kinds of functions that was his you know uh, propositions so in his noted book uh, the politics of developing areas almond has drawn our attention to one interesting theme he proposed our attention to a very interesting theme a very interesting issue what is that so friends uh, he said he said that you know uh, though there are differences between highly advanced countries or developing countries or underdeveloped countries considering their structures all the structures in all these countries in all these part of the world perform similar functions legislative function uh, law enactment of, uh, activities judiciary function law interpretation or uh, executive function you know uh, execution of uh, laws so these kinds of functions are being performed by structures and structures are almost similar in all part of the world that was his propositions and he is trying to uh, bring in some scientific uh, scientific character to political science here structure he used the word structure not in the sociological sense or in the anthropological sense in anthropology or, or sociology structure has a very distinct meaning and in political science structure means simply institutions but he don't prefer he is he never prefer the word institution rather he prefer structure because he was interested and he had a distinct meaning he attributed a distinct meaning to the word structure every political system has several institutions or several structures such as political party legislature executive judiciary right so alman claims alman claims that all these were previously called institutions now we can call these uh, the mass structures so structural functional approach uh, he further developed um, along with the gb powell in the book comparative politics a development uh, the developmental approach his earlier uh, book was the politics of developing areas now he advanced this theory in another book which was co-written with uh, G.B. Powell titled Comparative Politics and Developmental Approach. So, these people, that is G.B. Powell and Gabriel Almond argued, argued that political system, that in all political systems, all political systems, irrespective of their nature, uh, nature of uh, function, uh, some functions will stay relevant to every society. So these are functional requirements of every system. These functions are the functional requirement of every system. They suggested the use of functions and the functional requisites instead of the word used by david easton 
that is input and output. David Eason used the word input and output. Instead, Gabriel Almond used the word functions and functional requisites. So, these people have proposed seven functions with a political uh, system. A political system has to function, perform seven functions and four of them are input functions and three of them are output functions. So, they believe that in mature systems there is functional specialization but in immature political system there will not be any kind of uh, functional specialization. Uh, but you know, after overall, these people that Gabriel Armand, G.B. Powell, uh, all these people have changed the nomenclature of political science because they were dissatisfied with the uh, earlier words used in political science. The reason forward by Almond that he wanted to change the concepts or uh, he wanted to change you know the categories in political science is because uh, political science uh, has changed a lot. Uh, therefore, society has changed a lot. So, people's attitude and perspectives have changed a lot over the centuries. So, political science requires some new terms, some new vocabularies, some new kinds of needs to develop lexicon of its own. So, he used a political system instead of state. In his opinion, the term state is mainly a legal concept. But political system includes many other ideas uh, besides the legal structure of state. So, Alman further says that power is a legal term. And for that reason, uh, he cautiously avoids the use of the term state. So the concept of function can conveniently, conveniently be used. So you can use the term function instead of the word power. So even the word function is more comprehensive. He, and he also prefers distinct roles to every office or every structure. So how let us see how structural functionalism originated in political science. The so structural functional approach is derived from the earlier use of functionalism and systems model in anthropology, sociology, biology. So structural functions assume the simple idea that every nation state system that provides will have certain functions to perform. That is the core idea of structural functionalism. What is that? Every nation state or every state, uh, no matter where, will have certain kinds of distinct functions to perform. And political science has to analyze what functions are being performed by what kind of structure. That is a subject matter of political science. And Gabriel um, David Eason says that the subject matter of political science is authoritative allocation of values, how rewards, how status, how resources are being allocated in society by a legitimate authority. Here he says that the core, cons the subject matter of political science is that uh, how a distinct functions, how distinct functions are being performed by distinct uh, structures, right? So some interesting analysis are developing. You see, so the goal of a political scientist is to find out what something actually does in a political system, as opposed to what it is supposed to do. What it is supposed to do was the concern of ancient political scientists like Plato, Aristotle, some, some, someone in, of that era. So Emil, Emil Durkheim uh, was another person who elaborately uh, elaborated the idea of structural functionalism that society has various structures and various structures will have uh, different parts and different parts will perform some different function and all these are integrated into a whole system. So, um, society according to Emil Durkheim was an entity, right? It, society was an entity, a structure, a, a holistic structure. Then, you know, as you, uh, as we already know, anthropologist Boris Law, Bronis Law, Bronis Law, Malinovsky and uh, A.R. Radcliffe Brown uh, heavily influenced that idea of structural functionalism. So, uh, then Talcott Parson have contributed to this idea. Uh, Gabriel Almond was a pioneer of structural functionalism in political science. And Gabriel Almond and G Coleman, in their book, The Politics of Developing Areas, had identified four character characteristics to every political system. What are them? Let us see. They are saying that every political system, wherever you go, in which in, in any part of the world, you will see every political system will have certain kinds of functions. 
certain kinds of uh, structures and they say that these are the characteristics of a political system let us see first one is that political structure that there are simple and complex political systems in different parts of the world and um, be it the industrial world or non industrial world be it the west or the east be it the first world second world or third world wherever you go you can see that every in every part of the world there will be some kind of political structures first point second point second point is that no matter where you are in every part of the world the structures you have seen will have to perform certain kind of distinct functions so no matter where in every part of the world every structure will perform a distinct kind of function political function the second point let us see the third point they argue that in every part of the world be it as, uh, you know uh, advanced or non advanced industrial or non industrialized political structures have multi functions to perform that means a political structure perform not only the function it was supposed to perform but it perform functions which was not supposed not to perform that said in in advanced societies legislature perform law interpretation function or law execution function or judiciary perform not only uh, law interpretation function but law enactment function that is what he meant by multifunctionality of uh, political system and finally this is the third point and the fourth point is that all political system no matter where you are are mixed systems that means uh, in a cultural sense you know all the political systems you can see that there are modern uh, modernity as well as uh, traditionalism that is there will be Uh, in your political system you can find that there are traditional elements in your political system as well as modern elements in your uh, political system because political cultures are uh, mixed in almost all uh, systems so be it the advanced system political system you can see that there are culture political culture that are a mix of both the traditionalism and the modernism right so first point political structures and political second point political structures will perform certain distinct political functions and all the political systems will have perform uh, multi functions and all political systems are mixed these are the four characteristics uh, these people have identified and let us see what are the functions of a political system according to gabriel almond gabriel almond says that there are uh, you know distinct functions like david eason said the input functions as well as output functions the input functions he identified as political socialization and recruitment uh, political interest articulation third political interest aggregation and fourth political communication so friends uh, he listed output functions as three they were rule making rule implementation and rule adjudication right so other other functions of a political system are conversion process basic pattern maintenance and various capabilities like distributive or symbolic capabilities these were the nomenclatures he had contributed to political science you see he proposed system model he proposed political idea of political socialization political articulation political aggregation political communication rule making rule implementation rule adjudication then capabilities of a system pattern maintenance conversion process so he has proposed so many interesting vocabularies in political science so the input functions let us see the input functions the input functions are four in number the first one political socialization recruitment friends he says that uh, every political system there will be a kind of political socialization or role recruitment through the process of political socialization people gradually adjust themselves into a political system and the political system after socializing the people will recruit members of the society into specialized agencies of the structure that political system socialize people so political system induct people into a political culture induct people into the uh, political uh, aspect of society after they um, educate the people into the system they will also recruit members of society into different structures this happens in every uh, political system they argue second function is interest articulation so very important function of every political system interest articulation in every political system uh, particular in pluralist political system citizens claim the fulfillment of their demands through uh, uh, 
of their interest fulfillment of their interest fulfillment of their uh, demands so but there is a huge gap between their demands and actual realization so uh, they articulate interest they articulate their interest before the authority and authority will meet that interest by different means that is interest articulation then comes interest aggregation. Interest aggregation is a third function of a political system. Gabriel Alman says in every political system, where no matter where you are, political parties uh, or political different political structures perform the role of political aggregation. In developed societies, political parties aggregate the interest of the citizen. That you put forward certain interests, certain demands to the political system, and who will aggregate all your uh, demands and interests? It is the political parties. And in some other dif uh, difficult societies or different societies. Uh, you will find that uh, some other agencies other than political parties will aggregate the uh, interest being put forward by the citizen. So various demands and claims of the citizens are aggregated into a consolidated form and they are passed over to the political system for action. That is what he meant by uh, interest aggregation. And the fourth function of a political system is political communication function. So old societies, different interests are being put forward by citizen that goes into the system so there will be communication there will be communication a communication channel in the political system and there will be some agencies to perform this communication uh, uh, role of communication channel or medium in every political system there must exist a network or an, a, a network for communication so it is very important uh, it should be independent and autonomous also it should not be affected by any kind of power game or any kind of ideology because you know it should not be manipulated communication system should not be manipulated all uh, all political systems will have certain kind of political functions sorry sorry political communication function and it is through the political communication channel citizens pass their interest to the society and uh, the concerned authority will aggregate all these interest and let us see the output function there are three output functions according to gabriel almond Gabriel Almond says that output functions include rule making, rule application, rule adjudication. Rule making is a function of um, legislature. In every society, there will have some kind of structures will perform that will perform the role of rule making. So he is not saying legislature, he's rather he is saying rule making. Then comes rule application. Rule application is a function of executive. In every society, there will be some kind of executive authority, they will perform the role of a role of rule may sorry rule application they execute the uh, laws and uh, uh, enactments and third is rule adjudication in every society there will be a rule uh, structures that will perform the role of rule adjudication uh, there it is otherwise called judiciary in most society is called judiciary but he never say judiciary rather he say rule adjudication that's how nomenclature he used and friends you see gabriel almond and many others have to have made thorough studies about the output functions of various political systems and in liberal democracies such as US, Britain, France, Canada government functions bear striking similarities government functions uh, bear striking similarities but in third world countries there is no similarity in the output functions uh, this is mainly due to the nature of political system so due to the nature of political system the, uh, the function of output dif uh, differs from society to society so you know it was some kind of uh, a comparative analysis of political system but through this system model he was trying to compare different political systems so and he says that the other functions of a political system are uh, are adaptation and change so another uh, some other interesting vocabularies vocabularies coined by gabriel almond adaptation and change it has been held by gabriel almond and many others that every political system is a dynamic system that will be subjected to change and growth so uh, they will they will adapt to the system they will adapt to the uh, to the environment and change according to the expectation of the people so uh, adaptation and change are very uh, important in the system analysis of gabriel almond if the political system adjusts or adapts itself with the new challenges emanating from the environment then that means the political system has succeeded um, succeeded and it is a successful political system and it is adapt it adapt to the environment again change it travels with the adjustment or adaptation so adaptation means uh, suitable adaptation means suitable for a new kind of environment or new kind of purpose 
when a political system is faced with new circumstances new environment it cannot outrightly reject or uh, cannot outrightly accept it because it has to uh, adjust with the new environment that is what he meant by adaptation and change so it tries to accommodate itself with the new situation this adaptation or adjustment brings about change in the political system the change is inevitable because in an open system the political system cannot keep itself from uh, aloof from other social systems like economic system religious system or cultural system so we can find that Almond's theory of general system is also a theory of political change. His theory of general system is also a theory of political change. Because influence of uh, outer factors of political system uh, persuade the political system to adapt itself with the environment. So outside factors will also influence political system to adapt itself with the environment. This change may be quantitative or qualitative. But the fact is that uh, both in Eastern's analysis and Alman's analysis uh, of general system theory, there is both adaptation and change. The system needs to adjust itself with the environment. There will be so many changes in the environment, people's perspective change, people's attitudes change, so new things will emerge. So the system itself has to uh, adjust or adapt uh, and change accordingly. Otherwise, there will be uh, system malfunction. So this, you know, uh, then that uh, Alman says that uh, it is through the adaptation or adjustment conversion take uh, is taking place. Conversion. Another word he coined, another interesting, uh, you know, vocabulary has coined is that conversion process. He is saying that he was saying that the demands or claims of the citizen coming from the system uh, or from the environment do not remain unattended. System has to attend the uh, claims or demands from the system. So. Today, tomorrow, they are converted into decisions or policies, that is uh, output. So, demands, claims and support of for these, these uh, you know, inputs and, uh, uh, and decisions or policies are called outputs. That is, the demands, claims and support for these, uh, for these, you know, uh, conversion, for these, you know, kinds of claims com coming from the system are called, uh, called output. So this is called conversion process. Inputs are converted into output. Uh, the conversion takes place through a feedback, just like you know what Davidson said, feedback. But the conversion depends on capabilities. That uh, another word he has coined, and the interesting vocabulary he has coined is the capabilities of a political system. He was saying that you know every political system will should have should need to have a certain kind of capabilities. If the system don't have uh, does, uh, does not have the uh, capability. It, it is expected of the system will face you know malfunction so capabilities indicate the ability of a political system to receive the demands from the demands from the system and the claims from the system and uh, to act accordingly or to which means to implement the demands and claims the question of augmentation of capability is also very important augmentation that is system has to augment new and new capabilities for this purpose, essential of a political system is to proceed uh, the work of political socialization or political recruitment. That political system has to augment the capability by socializing the people, by inducting uh, new people into the political structures, by recruiting members of the society into different political structures. So it has to adapt itself with the citizen, adapt itself with the environment. So it has to orient the people into the system. Otherwise, people will become, you know, iconoclasts or will they will move against the system and bring troubles to the system. So socialize. So it will perform the system will perform the function of political socialization. So animal system analysis uh, is thereby, you know, throws uh, or develops some kind of stability. Stability. It is through uh, conversion, augmentation of capabilities. Uh, the system maintains stability in the political system. So friends. Uh, when you when the system is able to maintain stability it will bring equilibrium position uh, if the system is not able to bring in equilibrium position in the political system uh, the system will malfunction that is what you know uh, Gabriel Almond says you see uh, like David Easton Gabriel Almond was also trying to propose a very complicated a very complicated theory of uh, political analysis and he was trying to make political science more scientific that means you know you have to study uh, political life in terms of quantifiable facts that the subject matter or the content of political science should be that uh, which should which a political science should be able to test verify replicate make it science that is what they were saying that you sh you cannot simply say the attitudes of people you cannot simply uh, study the perspectives of the people you cannot simply study what is in the mind of a people you have to study those things only those things which can be measured tested verified 
quantified, replicated, should be science. Political science should be a science. That's what you know these people were saying. So Gabriel Hammond's analysis of political system through the model called structural functional uh, functional analysis, he was trying to propose a an empirical theory of political science and he was trying to bring a new subject matter to political science. He was trying to develop the content of political science more scientific which can be more uh, you know verifiable and empirical. Friends, uh, with this I am going to wind up this lecture. Uh, have some questions. Thank you. Bye. See you.